calamai. That's the chamorro corn pudding. I'm adding a half cup of masa harina, a half cup of sugar, a half cup plus one tablespoon of cornstarch. Now this is a cold pot, meaning I did not turn the heat on yet. We're going to stir this up. And remember, you've got some water boiling or getting ready to boil in a separate pot. Or I just pour two cups of water into a measuring pitcher that you can put in the microwave and heat it up until it boils. And stir this around until there are no lumps. Then you're going to add one and a half cups of thick coconut milk. And stir till it's a smooth mixture. I remember going to fiestas and one particular aunt would always come with a tray of calamai and latiza. One of those school lunch trays from way back when, you know, when we had real okay, I won't say it. <laughs> real food in the school cafeterias. But anyways, so yeah, it was pretty neat. You can always count on this one aunt to bring calamai and latiza. I'm just stirring this. This particular recipe and directions is for calamai that's pudding-like. So you can slice it and serve it as you would a piece of pie, but you have to eat it with a spoon. There is another version of calamai that you can slice it and serve it like jello. And that's also on my website, paulaq.com. The written instructions for this recipe are there as well. If you go to the More Recipes tab, you'll find it. Okay, this looks great. We're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of butter, unsalted butter, and half teaspoon of red food coloring. And give this a stir. Go ahead and turn the heat on now to medium low so we can melt the butter. So not low, not medium, kind of somewhere in between. The traditional color for calamai, or most people use red food coloring to make pink. You can do whatever color you want, really. I've seen some green, blue maybe once, but normally it's pink. Oh, the smell of cinnamon dusted on top of this because of the coconut milk. Mmm, yummy. It's such a great combination. Okay, so my butter has melted. Now I'm going to add this boiling water. That's two cups of boiling water. And just keep stirring it. It's going to thicken very quickly. Be careful as you're adding that in. Oof, hot. And we're going to continue to stir this until this mixture looks and feels as it moves in the pan like a very thick filling. Bootsy bootsy filling. Okay, it's going to be very thick. It won't take long. It 
if this thickens too fast on you, you can lower it down a little bit, but I'm keeping it here still about medium low. Okay, your, remember your water has to be boiling. It's going to help cook that cornstarch taste out and thicken this properly. If it's not boiling, it's not going to turn out properly, turn out the right way. I like using this rubber spatula because you can get around the edges of the pot and the corners. See it's thickening quite a bit already. We got to keep going. It's not yet thick. If you don't thicken this long enough to the correct consistency, it's not going to set in the pan. It's going to be runny. So it's got to look and feel like a very thick filling. And that boiling water helps to bring the mixture up to temperature, the correct temperature. So you get the right consistency. And it's thickening up. You can see how it moves in the pot. It's one of the reasons why I like doing these videos up close with whatever I'm cooking. Because you don't really need to see me. You need to see how things move in your pot. I remember in Germany when I was trying to figure out how to make these French sponge cakes and how to temper chocolate and uh, this was before YouTube I'm pretty sure in the late 90s so much time and money trying to figure it all out <laughs> because even if you have a recipe it could be very good instruction. You just need to see how it moves. You need to feel it. Well, too bad we don't have feel a vision or smell a vision. <laughs> Still got some ways to go here, thickening. Make sure you have your platters out and ready to go. You don't have to prep it. You don't have to put pan spray. Just leave it clean and ready and waiting it's getting there I can feel it's thickening up quite a bit it's not there yet and good shoulder workout here <laughs> Not yet, it's still not thick enough, although you could see as I'm running it through. It's got to be very thick. Aye, a day. <laughs> Okay, we are nice and thick and ready to pour. Okay, see how that kind of just pick it up again. So it's not pourable. You're going to have to scrape this into the pan. That's the right consistency. Turn your heat off. I poured my calamai in. Now I'm just kind of Spreading it out. Okay. Then we're going to sprinkle cinnamon over the top. Well, I don't have enough calamai to pour over that extra Latiza custard. 
This is a very creamy, delicious calamari recipe. There we go. We'll just let this cool completely. Then you can store it in the fridge uncovered.